I first met Miles because uh, there was a TV show in Philadelphia called Time Out. And uh, it was a morning talk show, and they had Miles on the show. They were going to have him on, you know, to interview him. So they figured, uh, this is in Philadelphia, and uh, they figured since they were going to have Miles on this TV show, they wanted to have some music for the show. So they brought myself, Christian McBride, and uh, we had a little trio, and we played on TV. And Miles, that's how Miles heard me, and he heard me play, and he liked what he heard, and he asked for my number, and uh, that's where we met. And about eight months later, he called me. Come join the band. Okay. Now, you toured, you toured Europe with Miles. Yeah, that's the first time I went to Europe with Miles. Now, it's... It's um, been often said by a lot of musicians that over there they have a much deeper understanding and therefore more intellectual appreciation for music compared to yeah. the people in this country. It, it does seem that way. I, I don't know. Um, you know, I hate to say that because, uh, you know, I played, we played here tonight and the people loved it and they were really into it. And I play a lot in the States and, and have a great seems like the people really get it. The audience gets it. But, and you know, it's our culture from here, but in Europe, uh, there's a more laid back sense and they understand art, uh, maybe sometimes a little more, more maybe a, a larger majority of people it is. I don't know, but that's, that seems to be the case, you know. Like in the States, you play a lot of uh, clubs and things like that. In Europe, you play concert halls, you know, so. It's a different presentation because of the appreciation of the arts and they understand that that's a very artistic form of music, so. But all music is, but. Now, if you were to tell a story, if you were to take a snapshot of, of your time with Miles Davis, what particular anecdote or short story just stands out in your head? that will just live with you forever? Oh, you know, there's, there's, I, I was just so honored and, and happy to be there around Miles. You know, I was really a straight ahead jazzer, you know, at a young age. And I loved Miles Davis and all his body of work and what he was as an artist. The style of music that he was playing at the time that I joined the band was not something that I was really interested in at that time. I simply did it to play with Miles, you know. But then once I did it, I started to understand, you know, and started to love being around him and understood how his approach was still very much in a very traditional pr approach. But people want to hear stories, and I can never really think of anything uh, right away, you know, just uh, how great it was and how encouraging he was. and. You know how much I learned from him and how cool he was, and probably one of my favorite things is is when I was on the road with him, I decided after watching him every night and hearing him, I decided I want to learn how to play the trumpet. So I I went home after that tour and got a trumpet and started practicing it real good for about six months, and then I went to see him and uh, I told him I had been playing the trumpet. So he handed me his trumpet and said, "Play." So, wow. So I, I was trying to play just like him, of course, and sound like him. So I played some of his licks, you know, and he turned around. What? He said, you sound just like me. <laughs> and and he, took, he gave me a mouthpiece, from his, a couple of mouthpieces from his trumpets. And I have, a, I have one of his mutes, too. So, you know, that right there was amazing. And uh, that's one of my favorite stories. Now, um one other question while, while we're on the, um, you know, on the discussion of the Harmon Mute. In, in what specific way would you say the Harmon Mute romanticizes the trumpet as, 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 a, as a human voice almost? Well, that's what Miles said. He said he liked the mute because it reminded him, he felt like it was more like a voice singing. And it is, it's almost like, a, you know, like you're humming. Like, Mm -hmm. But I heard that when he played with the open trumpet too. But nobody played with a mute like he did. You know. You know. And the thing, the fallacy about the Harmon, Harmon mute. Harmon was a brand. Harmon makes several different kinds of mutes. It's actually a wah wah mute. 
and the mutes come with a stem in them, and, you're, and they're really designed to go wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and Dizzy took the stem out, and uh, that's how they got that sound. Hey, excuse me, can we, can we get quiet, please? Close the door. Yeah. Sorry, please continue. Yeah, with the Harmon, the Harmon mute is very much like a voice. But a lot of guys, Dizzy was the first one. I asked Miles, I said, you know, who took the stem out of the mute? Because it comes with a stem inside there that you pull out. Once you pull it out, the, the, the mute was never really intended to be played without that stem in it. So Dizzy started it without the stem, and it's that mellow, beautiful sound that you hear, you know? But the Harmon mute, that's the Wawa mute. So there's other companies that make them, it's just that the Harmon was the best one. And they were made, the original ones were made in Chicago. I have one right there.